Hey, welcome back. We're continuing with our video series about perspective. And if you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you watch it first before watching this since I will be mentioning a lot about the three elements of perspective here. So check it out, I'll put the link in the description below or you can click the link above. So today we're going to talk about the rules when using perspective. The first rule is this. When something is further away, it gets smaller and closer to the eye level. I have some models here with different heights, but this rule will also apply even if they have similar heights. Anyways, I'm gonna move them away from each other. And as we can see, the first rule is starting to make sense. The model gets smaller when I move it further away. And as they get smaller, the level of their head and their feet are closer to the eye level. Wait, 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 wait. I know what you're thinking. That's very obvious. Just draw something and make them smaller and that's it. Well, this is a wrong example of perspective. And that is because of our second rule, which is a part of an object should be proportional to the eye level. What that means is that the eye level should hit the same part of the object. Let's go back to this drawing. The eye level doesn't hit both of the model at the same body part. The eye level on this first model hits the hip, but the eye level on the second model hits the knees. And that is what makes the perspective in this drawing incorrect. It's either their hip or knees should be lined up with the eye level to make a convincing and realistic perspective. As the eye level moves, the body parts alignment will also move. When the eye level is low, it should be level with the feet. When the eye level is in the middle, it should be level with the torso or the hip. When the eye level is high, it should be level with the head. But notice how the eye level is not exactly lined up with all the heads of the model. And that is because they have different heights. If all of these models have exactly the same heights, the eye level will hit the exact head position. So always remember that as well. You don't need to line up the eye level at the exact body parts unless they have the same height. But what if the objects have a big difference in height? A great example for this is an adult and a kid. Do you think they will have the same body part alignment? Well, let's take a look. As I move up the camera, the eye level also moves up, but the upper part of their body is not lining up. And this is because they have a very big difference in height. But as I move the camera down, their lower body part, which is the knees and the feet, lined up with the eye level. Here are some examples applying the second rule. The third and final rule when using perspective is this. The surface of an object gets smaller as it gets closer to the eye level or vanishing point. Here I have a box sitting on the ground and I'm gonna duplicate this and move the copy upward. As we can see, as the boxes move closer to the eye level, the more smaller its surface gets. The box in the middle doesn't show any top or bottom surface since it is the most closest to the eye level. Even if I lower the position of the eye level, this rule still applies. And of course, even if I move the eye level higher, the same thing happens. The top or bottom surface of an object gets smaller as it gets closer to the eye level. Let's make another example, but now we're gonna use the vanishing point. I have a tile here, and I'm gonna duplicate this and move the copy further away. And as we can see, as the tiles move closer to the vanishing point, the more smaller or thinner the surface gets. We can apply this rule to improve the perspective and depth of a scene in our drawing or painting. The more smaller it gets, the more convincing the perspective will be. For example, these windows in the wall are technically correct. They are positioned accurately, correctly along the vanishing point. But to add more depth, we should shrink the sizes of the windows as it gets to the vanishing point. As we can see, the second image looks more dynamic than the first one. Here are some great examples of using the third rule effectively. So yeah, that's it. Those are the rules to remember when using perspective in your drawing. We'll continue this perspective lessons in the next video. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you will be notified when I upload it. And if this video helps you, please don't forget to like, to share, and to comment to help me grow this channel. Thank you and see you next time. Take care.